So, hey, man, welcome to True Backstage and Road Stories. So, I don't have a pass for you today, but I do have a, a yak it, man. I got a yak it. Look, I got a Lou Reed jacket. So, this is, uh, this is from Lou Reed 79, I think. It's on the back. It's my name. It's uh, 7879. So being on the road with Lou Reed was try quite a trip. Man, heck of a trip. But before we get into Lou Reed, and you know, I, mean, I got a good, I've been debating on whether I should tell you this story or not. This is like, I don't know, man. I don't know if I should <laughs> or not. But let's see. Uh, yeah, before I get into Lou Reed, I got to thank a friend of mine who sent me a camera. My camera kept uh, messing up on me. So, but anyway, it, it messed, kept messing up on me, man. I couldn't get it fixed. I couldn't turn it off. I couldn't do nothing with it. So I sent a Facebook message saying that I needed to borrow somebody's camera. Well, this guy, my friend, his name is Jimmy Withers. And he's friends with all them people down in Florida. He's friends with all the guys like Gene Odom and Edward Griffith, Craig Reed, Mark Frank. He's friends with all these people from Florida and Jacksonville area. And he's a tile guy. He, he does beautiful tile work. And I was going to have him come do some work here in Houston, but we couldn't. So we didn't. And anyway, but Jimmy sent me a camera, man. He sent me this nice video camera. And this is the other one I'm looking at because this one kind of works sometimes, sometimes it don't. But I just want you all to know why I keep looking over there because I'm looking at another camera. So, but Jimmy Withers sent me this and then he sent it. I mean, when I, he asked me for my address the day after I posted it on Facebook, I gave him my address and he sent it that very same day, man. It was like he spent money for shipping, wouldn't let me pay him for the shipping, wouldn't let me pay him for the camera or anything. That's a lot. That says a lot, man. I'm telling you what, this man rocks in my world. What a nice guy. You know, I'm giving a shout out to Jimmy Willis because, man, he de withers. He deserves it. He de deserves it very much. Somebody just give me a video camera so I can do this for y'all, you know. Uh, you know, I had asked earlier, you know, about a microphone. And thank you to my friend Greg Stevens, who sent me this Shure MV7 podcast microphone. You know, how cool was that of him to do that? That was very cool, and it's helped out immensely. A lot of people have commented about my sound has improved so much <laughs> but yeah yeah it's been great man so anyway but i have to ask you this please like and subscribe you know if y'all y'all would please hit that subscribe button if you watch this and if you don't you know it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. And if you're going to watch it, hit the thumbs up button, please. All that stuff counts according to the YouTube algorithm. And it helps us out, us creators, out a lot. So please like and subscribe. Also, like the other people that I mentioned, you know, on my channel, man, just check them out. You know, Big Sons Lawn Care, Dogman Homestead, um... Let's see who a temporal overdose, bafflements lounge, you know, and don't forget Craig Reed and the Stone Roadie Show with uh, Edward Griffith. You know, they get all these old survivors and people had anything to do with the Skinner plane crash. They get them on there and they do a little, you know, one hour or whatever, however long episode, and, and it's really cool, worth watching. So y'all check it out, man. And then, now I'm going to tell you the story about Lou Reed. Now, I didn't know if I should bring this up because it's kind of, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> whoa, rough story, man. So, <laughs> now Bobby, Bobby and I were out, man. We tried to go, we were in New York. We toured the northeastern part of the United States, and we did New York. 
I don't know how many shows in New York we did, but we did, must have done a few. I think we did the Apollo and uh, a few other places. You know, we hung out in the village, Soho and all that. But we had a lot of fun. We, back then, studio, if y'all don't know, for all those of y'all that are too young to know, Studio 54 was a bar or a nightclub, I should say, that were all the pretty people and the famous people and the cool people hung out in New York. And it was something if you got to go to Studio 54. Well, we had a night off and we put on our Lou Reed jackets, man, and we went to Studio 54. We went to the door. You know, where all the, you know, the line of people was. And we kind of got there a little. We decided to go a little early. So we got there, and then this guy wasn't going to let us in. We said, come on, man. We got Lou Reed jackets on. We're with Lou Reed, man. Come on. You know? And he was a big old bruiser. Oh, y'all ain't getting in, man. Oh, come on, man. Get Let us get in. Come on, man. We're not from here. He says, yeah, I can tell from your accent. You know? Y'all just went, maybe later. Or maybe I'll let y'all in later. And we're just like, nah, you know, never mind. That Studio 54 can't be that awesome. I could imagine now that I've seen videos of it, it's just people just standing around looking pretty, basically, and doing whatever else they do. And there, I can't say because of YouTube, <laughs> but you know what they did. So we had, we had our jackets on. Lou Reed jackets, and we were thinking that, you know, well, since Andy Warhol was a big uh, patron of Studio 54, we figured, and, and him and Lou Reed had such a, let's see, back in when, and when it was with the Velvet Underground, I think Andy Warhol was the producer of the Velvet Underground. Anyway, Andy Warhol was a big figure in Studio 54. So we figured with our Lou Reed jackets on, we could get in. Well, we didn't know that Lou Reed and Andy had had a falling out over some stuff, money or something. But we didn't know any of that. So, but to this day, I, I'm still uh, I'm still a Lou Reed fan. I'm still a fan of his music. And I'm still a fan of Andy Warhol, no matter what happened between them. But, you know, y'all should look up some stuff or Google or whatever, DuckDuckGo, do whatever on the Internet and look up Andy and look up some of Lou Reed's past, you know. But back to Studio 54, we didn't get in. Uh, You know, uh. So we decided to go to another bar. We got in the cab and asked the cab, hey, man, where's another bar we can go to? We want a cool bar. We don't want just some goofy place. You know, we want someplace cool. So he took us to this bar. And this bar, you know, it was pretty crowded. It was a cool bar. And I met this girl in this bar. And I thought she was kind of shiny. She was pretty. And then so... I said, well, let's go back to the hotel. So Bobby's ready to go. I'm ready to go. And and she's ready to go. So so we go. And, you know, we're in the back seat. Bobby's in the front seat. And we finally get to our hotel. I think we're staying at the Plaza. And the Plaza is one really, really nice, nice, nice hotel. For those of you that don't know, the Plaza is the stuff, man. It's the Plaza. So... <laughs> Anyway, we get in there, and so I don't know how long we were in there, but Bobby calls my room. I I don't even know how we got separate rooms. Usually, we had to double up, but we got separate rooms at the plaza. I guess Lou Reed had some kind of something there, but Bobby calls me up, and he said, Howie, he said, man, he said, that is not a girl. (laughs) I said, what? What are you talking about, man? He said, what that thing you're with is not a girl. He said, man, you need to get rid of her. And I said, oh, you got to be kidding me, man. I said, how can it not be a girl, man? It's got everything a girl has. He said, I'm telling you, that ain't that used to be a guy. I went, oh, no, you're kidding me. No. So he said, let me talk to her. So I said, okay. So he's 
talk to her on the phone. The next thing you know, they start screaming at one another. And then when she started screaming, that's when it all came out. She no longer had this pretty sexy voice anymore. It was, I can't say the words that she used. But but they were screaming at one another. Next thing you know, she grabs her stuff and hauls ass. I'm like, yeah, she, well, whatever. Man, I never heard the end of this for the rest of the tour. I'm telling you, it was horrible. I just, I can't believe I got duped like that, man. But we had a, and it just kind of ruined me. (laughs) I I didn't know what to think about it. Man, I, I don't know, man. But the tour was a lot of fun, so get that part out of your mind because I don't want to hear about it ever again. I have been debating on whether I should tell you this or not, but now you know, and I'm just telling you. So, yeah, let's go back about the camera that he sent me just in case any of y'all feel the need. Uh, I could use a... I could use some lighting. I have some really old, old, outdated lamps with bulbs in them. Then they're not, they're not film lamps either. They're house lamps. And so just in case y'all want to send me a light or two, uh, I'd be happy to accept them. So, <laughs> but anyway, so back to the Lou Reed story. So those of you who are not familiar with Lou Reed, he's uh he was like he was one of the first punk rockers. You know, he was he'd been around for a long time. He was with a band called the Velvet Underground. And then he went on his solo career. After he went into solo career, in my opinion, he produced a lot more music. He got uh he got a session bass player and he did that song, uh, Take a Walk on the Wild Side. The Take a Walk on the Wild Side, the, the bass player he got was a session player in England. He's the one that came up with that do, 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 do. Anyway, that was, uh, that was Lou Reed, Take a Walk on the Wild Side. He had some other great hits like Sweet Jane, um, Heroin, uh sally can't dance i mean just he was very very innovative for his time like uh noel said i'm (laughs) getting old and i forget things so all right let me throw this in and here we go